Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the so-called worst day on Earth. This is in regards to the time when an asteroid collided with our planet and caused one of the most dramatic extinctions on the planet. We're of course talking about the asteroid that I guess unofficially killed the dinosaurs. And today I wanted to talk about a study that just came out that investigated some other details about this collision and found out that one of the things that this asteroid did was dramatically change the oceans on our planet. Pointing at the fact that the collision of this asteroid with our planet created an extreme change in climate, which also seems to parallel what's happening today on the planet. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So once upon a time there was an asteroid. It was about 6 to maybe 7 kilometers in radius and one day it crossed the path of our planet. This happened something like 66 million years ago and although originally we always thought that this extinction was probably caused by some kind of a volcanic eruption, more specifically the volcanic eruption that started right here. This is actually what India looked like back then. There is an area known as the Deccan Traps and in here we've discovered that about 65 million years ago there was a very large volcanic eruption that very likely produced a lot of different gases. But modern investigation showed that this was one of the things that added to the extinction, but it wasn't really the cause. The major cause was probably this right here. You can see in the simulation made by Ian Webster that there is a little collision mark in uh, the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico that is essentially where we've discovered the um, really large crater caused by the rock that was about six to seven kilometers in radius. And I also wanted to show you one uh, really interesting graph you can find on Wikipedia that essentially shows you the number of species during different uh, times on Earth. So you can see that there was a really major drop in the number of species right here. This is actually known as the Great Dying, the biggest mass extinction ever. And it happened around 250 million years ago and was very likely caused by another major volcanic eruption, but this time in Siberia. These are called the Siberian traps. But the dinosaur extinction happened right here and you can see the sudden drop was very likely caused by something really major. And although today we're pretty sure this major event started with the collision of an asteroid, the collision itself did not really kill the animals or whatever life was present on the planet. It's actually the after effects of the collision, specifically of course things that both arrived to the planet and things that were excavated by the collision itself as you can see in the simulation by NASA. Because of the location where this asteroid hit, it actually suddenly evaporated and literally redistributed a huge amount of material that was technically sediment. And a lot of it was things like sulfurous and things like nitrogen rich compounds that eventually were then reintroduced into the oceans around the planet. Now all of this stuff um, first started in the atmosphere and very likely also lowered the temperatures on our planet, which actually has been confirmed by another study previously. And following the changes in temperature, a lot of the other material then started to re-enter the oceans. So suddenly you had all of this highly acidic rain falling back onto the planet, kind of reminiscent of the scenes from one of my most favorite movies Blade Runner that I mentioned in one of the previous videos. And here all of this acid rain essentially turned the oceans more acidic, which is exactly what the scientists behind this paper discovered by studying the sediments that were discovered in a very unusual cave in Netherlands. Because for some unusual reason this cave was able to preserve the sediments from various ages and the scientists behind this paper were able to see what kind of animals were present during the time of the collision and also years afterwards. And what they discovered is that a very specific animal that uses calcium for its shells was actually missing for many years following the collision. These little animals made their shells out of calcium carbonate and if the water becomes too acidic, even by a very small amount, an amount of about 0.3 pH. And here is the pH scale just to show you some of the examples. So basically even 0.3 pH will very likely cause these animals 
to be unable to produce their shells, and this is what they think may have happened. The acidic environment that was created by all of this sediment that was suddenly deposited into the water changed the oceans for a very long time. The scientists behind this paper believe that the oceans changed for at least a million years, and the acidity of the oceans led to a tremendous destruction of life. Mostly because these tiny animals used to serve as a very important part of the food chain. They were kind of like plankton today. Plankton that you see right here is used by a very, very large amount of animals. Many fish, many different mammals as well. And all of them rely on these tiny shell-bearing animals who would definitely perish if the shells were no longer there. And so the scientists behind this paper believe that the introduction of all of this acidic material led to the major destruction of the food chain and thus resulted in a major die-out of animals living inside the ocean. And what's really interesting is that it also adds up with all of the other extinction events. Because it seems that with every major extinction event, it was always something to do with water, and in all of those cases, the water animals or the water life were affected the most. We always had trouble explaining how and why this is happening, and why is it that um, it's the marine life essentially that's responsible for most of the species suddenly disappearing, but changing acidity of the oceans would definitely do the trick. It would definitely suddenly destroy most of the life in the oceans. And so this study definitely explains something that uh, we kind of suspected, but did not know for a fact. So the asteroid collision that began with a very large explosion, an extremely large tsunami, and a lot of other effects, such as, for example, forest fires across the planet, eventually also led to the dramatic changes in the atmosphere, the cooling effect, and of course the sudden changes in the oceans making them more acidic and essentially deadly to animal life. And honestly, it's a brilliant investigation and a brilliant addition to our understanding of why certain animal life perishes. And even though this is something that happened a long time ago, the authors of this paper and also other scientists as well point at one really alarming sign here. In the last few decades, the acidity of the oceans today has also changed by probably about 10% of the value that was discovered uh, through this particular study, but they are not really getting any smaller. And most of this acidity change seems to uh, stem from the emissions of CO2, which actually does end up producing acidic compounds in the water. And more specifically, CO2 usually turns into what's known as carbonic acid, and what's really scary is that it hasn't really stopped at all. Here's actually a general graph that shows you how the acidity of the oceans has changed in the last few decades. And here the data suggests that as the concentration of CO2 in the water increases, the pH is slowly dropping. And this drop in pH will eventually make the water more acidic and thus probably create the same problem that the ancient world of dinosaurs experienced as well. Essentially, the modern life in the oceans that depends on creating various shells out of uh, calcium carbonates will no longer be able to produce them, will then end up slowly disappearing and going extinct and thus create a major disaster in the food chain. Because a lot of these animals are, well, they're eaten by other animals and those animals are eaten by us. And so this study that technically was looking at the effects of the asteroid collision has also discovered something that applies to modern life. Although unfortunately not something that's good news. More of bad news again. So in that sense, uh, this study also demonstrates to us that the collision of an asteroid can definitely have dramatic effects that we can't even imagine. So depending on where the asteroid hits, it might end up releasing a lot of materials that would then change the atmosphere and the waters of the planet dramatically. Which is exactly what the scientists behind this paper believed happened when the asteroid hit this location here, releasing millions and millions of tons of all of the deposited material, all of the sulfites, all of the nitrites that were there from life that existed before. 
and had it hit somewhere else, like for example here in North America, it may have not really had so many dramatic effects. But because it was actually in the waters where sediments were already deposited, it ended up releasing all this material and mixing it with the rest of the planet. But anyway, on that sad note, well, check out the paper in the description below, and also make sure to subscribe because we're going to be talking more about the modern discoveries related to the collision that took place 66 million years ago, because in the last uh, few years we discovered some absolutely incredible things, and I really want to share them with you. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And if you like t-shirts or other merchandise, there is the wonderful person shop that was recently opened where you can buy your own wonderful person design. I'll see you tomorrow, space out.